Hello and welcome to This Contains Garlic. You are here with your hosts, Georgia Garlic and... Mark Garlic. And we are back for episode seven. I do think actually maybe we need a jingle. Maybe it's yeah, time we get... A... The, uh, the, yeah, the start. To, to, give it, to give you a bit of context, it normally takes us about eight takes to actually like start yeah. the podcast. And like a mini argument. A mini argument. Mini or many? Many. Like <laughs> Numerous. Mark thinks he can control the sounds and stuff really well. I'm basically a sound engineer. Okay, that's offensive to anybody that is a qualified I take sound engineer. <laughs> yeah, I'm just take... joking. You know, I'm just being sarcastic. Anyway, episode seven, what are we talking about? Confidence in the gym. Wow. Okay, and also just the gym in general, because, you know, the gym can be seen as a very positive space, but it can also be seen as, I guess, quite an intimidating space depending on the gym that you go to. Yeah, obviously. what was your first experience like in the gym? I think my first ever experience in the gym might have been... Where, where was the first, what was the first gym that you went to? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I, th- I feel like it was a leisure centre. I don't think it was a, a gym. Okay. Oh, well, that's a good question, actually. It was the first gym I ever went to. Does not include... Other facilities like a pool and a well tennis done, Mark. That's a leisure center. We obviously don't have leisure centers in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Excuse me. There's no is. leisure in Zimbabwe. No, you, no. Uh, there was nothing like we had gyms, but not there were very few and far between. There were only like three gyms. I think in my Bobby. first actual intro to a gym probably involved like a power plate or something rank like that. <laughs> Shaking your way to epilepsy. Mark's actually epileptic, just a bit of a fact of the day. Well, um, former epileptic. Former, <laughs> sorry, Mark. Former epileptic. Yeah. Um, yes, anyway, that's a fact of the day. No, we just want to start talking. Just We get asked quite commonly, you know, like I feel quite intimidated in the gym or you feel like it's a very male-dominated area, which is the case is, in a lot of commercial reality, gyms and the reality, honest. yeah. And as I said, like for a lot of, women training in gyms you know you can pretty much stereotype quite a few people in in the gym as we've said before and I think a lot of the time it's like women will tend to go to like a Pilates studio or something that's like less or they'll shy away from certain areas within the gym because they feel like they lack the confidence which is so shit because honestly the people that make that shit is either the environment in the sense of maybe the trainers like the gym that we go to okay is a sort of like a 25 quid a month like commercial oh it's actually called the gym yeah. anyway like, um it's obviously got all kind of walks of life that come into it because mm-hmm. I guess that's what stuff like this brings but you know there are trainers on the floor there and you know you do so, yeah, some friendlier more than others and that can and cannot be a You've always got like factor towards yeah whether or not you feel welcome or not yeah, like when we walked into that gym the first time we got back from Cape Town, it was like, it was quite like, okay, cool. Like, why is everybody staring? And even then, when mm. you can notice a resounding difference between the the head trainer, who has got a personality, friendly, always says hi, wants to get to know people in the gym, versus mm. some of the other PTs, where I actually wonder how the hell they've got clients. Because they walk around like with a face like a slapped ass. And yeah. so that's not very appealing when somebody guess, doesn't know what to do. Yeah, it can be an intimidating environment, not only for people that are fresh to the, the process, but it can also be very intimidating, regardless of your experience, going into a new gym or a new... Yeah, a new environment new to environment anything. Always it's, it's always intimidating and I remember my first job that I got at Fitness First in uh, Green Park I lasted less than 24 hours <laughs> walked in there the trainers were really uh, yeah it's one thing you learn about trainers groupish very uh, Everybody was in a tight knit group. Nobody said hello. I went to shake the one guy's hand. And he basically just laughed in my face. Yeah, but this and is the it's thing. It's just one of because... those things where, even though you have lo- lots of experience, it can be a very intimidating and very yeah. off putting environment. Like, we're, I would say that, you know, anyone that's ever worked with us or knows of or friends with us would say that me and Mark love to have a chat. I probably obviously talk more than what Mark talks, but. In general, I wouldn't say we're like overly confident people in like 
public environments in any way shape no. or form and so I think when you're going into environments like that it's also daunting you know from a coach's standpoint not mm. only a consumer you could say in a sense yeah. walking in um, but in general the gym should be viewed I mean it's weird because I'd say that back in the day you always used to say like oh PTs are on the floor to be asked questions you know yeah. what I mean so if you didn't know what you were doing go and ask a PT and they'd help you unfortunately I understand why people don't want to do that now because I do think so many PTs and gyms just feel like they might even be too good for like people that are in there that's the that's the vibe but that's I get. so counterproductive to 100% growing, helping about, anyone. Gr growing your own personal brand and you know, giving people a good customer service when they're in that environment because, like George has highlighted, the more charismatic, not charismatic, but the more polite you are and the more you greet people and say hello and smile at people, the more comfortable they, f they feel and the more comfortable they feel, the more they come and then they might be potentially interested in services and it's, it's a snowball yeah. effect from there. Also, retention of clients, you know, yeah. very much comes down to actually being quite pleasant to yeah. deal with and always, you know, and this is the thing where, you know, just because you might look good or feel like you look good mm. doesn't mean that you can't have a personality which has yeah. got manners and is polite. But, you know, but in it, it is a difficult, it is, it can be, a, the gym especially can be a very difficult environment because like you said, it is very male dominated and I have witnessed on numerous mm. occasions oh when we go to the gym, the guys that come and just push women, literally, the, maybe the lady's doing a super set and the guy just comes in, takes, takes the, the bench, off. does this. You know, the actually, the first time I walked into, and I'm not going to, I, I don't mind the gym that we go at now, but I guess I can also speak from a very experienced point. So I, I also don't want, you know, there's many people that aren't as experienced in yeah. a gym environment that probably wouldn't feel as comfortable. Yeah. But I mean, the first day we went in there, mm -hmm. I was doing a seated row, I think, and the guy just came and took the handle off literally pretty yeah, much mid-set. Yeah, literally. And I turned around and I just was like, I had my headphones in and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like literally, and, and I just, is, is, I don't want to be rude, rude, but also what the fuck are you doing? Like what puts you in a position yeah. to be able to do that to it somebody? It is very sexist though, because like a guy would never do that to and me. also to put into context you're not some like mark you know you've been in bodybuilding gyms you've been in like very aggressive environments you've yeah. also been in very tiptoe environments you know what i mean yeah. in the sense of premium studios and i think in general the vibe i get is that like the only women i really see enjoying themselves in the gym are the, those that have got more experience in a way or yeah. you know or it's looking past those facts. Like most of the time when you go into the gym, nobody really gives a fuck what you're doing in general. I think the, 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 the reality is the vast majority of the people that go to the gym every day consistently, I know this is going to be a very large statement, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but have some level of, uh, body, not body dysmorphia, but they feel a certain way about themselves, so that they, they tend to use the so gym they take up more. all the fucking mirrors and so, then stand there flexing yeah. their fucking arms. Yeah, that's another. So thing So you're going onto. in there, and you you you're being judged by people that are their own worst critics in their own way. So they're probably more concentrated on what they're doing and how they look more than actually what you're up to. You know what, actually, I, the other day I was going to say this to you. The other day I was, because me, as we've mentioned before, me and Mark do not train together. No. It's headphones in and we're not married. Like um, when I saw Mark walk through the gym, the amount of men and now, Look, Mark trains hard for his physique, but genetically, you're a big boy. He likes me like he's a big boy. I'm a big boy. boy. I'm a big boy. Um, stature, everything about it. You could probably associate it kind of like rugby-ish in the mm. sense of physique, you know. And so genetically, not only that you have put in work and you, you do train frequently, and this has been a profession at some yeah, point, yeah. You are bigger in nature. And the amount of men that just look directly at Mark like arms or look at mm. his size do you know what I mean and they'll just stare and, and like literally guys will come up to you and just like squeeze your arm my arms and stuff <laughs> you're like one dude told me I have fuck? a nice bum yeah that was really I still think you know that's I mean? a like, bit weird and that's I'm not gonna lie that's really I'm, I don't take quite, that as yeah a, it is like you're like okay that's 
But then you also I see go where in, you're coming from, but it's also quite I creepy. see where you're coming from with my nice ass. But yeah. No, it's also a bit creepy. And then you also think you're being watched all the time. Like, God forbid, you know, you should, like, mess up on an exercise or not be yeah. as, like, you know, people people genuinely watch and copy, which is not a bad thing because I sometimes think if you are exercising in the right way and somebody's copying you, you could probably... It's yeah. beneficial to them. But it's also a bit like, okay, cool. Like, can you stop, like, looking? Yeah, but generally it's... everybody's there for self-improvement. So you, as a person with no limited experience or somebody's feeling less confident, everybody is there to improve themselves to a certain degree. And generally when you see people training or doing something that's, you know, not your particular, like... Weird method of yeah, to agree. like ankle weight kickbacks and you know and you actually see somebody squatting a decent amount or a very good deadlift or something it's people are generally quite encouraging when it comes to that yeah but i think only like okay so you said that majority <laughs> you know, people are there for self-improvement. I would agree yeah. overall, I would say, there are some people in those gyms that are not there for self-improvement. They're there yeah. to either But I make, guess every, like, in every situation in life, you're always going to have wrong-ins. The fucking, the, the cretins, yeah. Yeah, you're always going to have wrong-ins. And like... Uh, in, like, did, did, or, did, did you not have a man that came up to you in the gym whilst oh I went to the toilet days. and say... Mate, uh, yeah, obviously I like training at this gym because if you've seen the girls, do you know what I mean? I just was like, what a fucking creep, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why you're still single, do you but know what I mean? But I guess, I guess <laughs> sometimes gyms for single people is a way of meeting like-minded individuals of the opposite well, sex. Well, how did we meet, sex. Mark? Um, <laughs> Mark crossed a professional the barrier. Relationship. Professional relationship, which Mark crossed... Cross, 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 crossed, crossed over. Cr crossed, crossed all the, uh, crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's. Yeah, on that consult form, I'm sure you did. As I said in my first uh, initial email to Georgia, I offer very compliment, uh, full service. A full round of service. A, a full in, package. A full of package. Services. In fact, my dad on our wedding day found the first email. Oh, yeah, to oh, put it into context, obviously, if you've listened to previous podcasts. I went on a load, of, a huge weight journey, weight loss journey, and when it came to like the refinement, she should say, and all of that, I actually ended up with Mark as my coach. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so obviously I'd emailed him, and I was like, "I'm really interested in your services, you know, all of <laughs> all you've got to offer, that large package that you've got to offer." And Mark replied back saying. I would love to help you. I offer like a full round service yeah. and like really in depth. And I was like, how deep really is that? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, and my dad actually found that first email and in his wedding suit when we got married, he yeah. actually brought up that email of yeah, what Mark jokes. said to me. And it's very, yeah, I mean, there was clearly quite a few sexual innuendos in there. Yeah, if you were geez. to think about it in the way we ended up now. But other than that, Mark's obviously not a creep in the gym. No. No. I like to think not. Well, I really fucking hope not. We're mad. No, I just keep to myself and just <laughs> Yeah, but focus on my own self improvement. Okay, Mark. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's one of these things when you go into the gym, obviously you're you're there to train. Do you know what I mean? You're there to exercise, yeah. you're there to go to a class, you're there to maybe mm -hmm. train with a friend or whatever yeah. it is. But I think building that confidence, you know, m I think the biggest barrier is forget getting into the gym. Mm. It's segregating yourself in gyms where, for example, a lot of women don't like going over to the weights area because yeah. every bench is consumed by a man. And, yeah. and it's, that is factually correct. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Doing inclined chest press. Well, this is the thing. Like, are people going in for self-improvement or are they there to just fucking bench press? <laughs> like, bang, yeah, just bang away. <laughs> because chest and buys. that's the best way to get turfed off a piece of equipment in a gym is yeah. taking up a chest machine as a woman <laughs> yeah because <laughs> men it's... are like excuse me yeah. i'm only here to train my chest i haven't mm. trained my legs since 2002 yeah. but like i'm here true, and though. get off the bench press yeah it is it's very true but i think it's that thing of like okay so i would say first and foremost going into a gym environment if you are wanting to you know under you know fully understand you know weight training or get better at something mm. that you personally want to do is go in with a program. Yeah, you need to have some form of structure so that you at least know which movements you're going to be doing, uh, what rep range, how many sets. It yeah. just gives you a understanding of, of 
programming and periodization that you don't have to sit and think, okay, well, what am I going to do next? You've just got it all laid out for you. And then true pro and proper programming, you're not going to be changing your workouts every single week. You're probably going to have three to four workouts that you're going to do in rotation for about four to six weeks. Yeah. And you're going to progressively overload those movements and over time, you're going to get better and better the more and more you do the Yeah, movements. and I don't think you should ever be afraid to, as I said at the start, like it can be very intimidating because half the trainers look like they've got a face like a slapped ass, but mm. their job, if they are on the gym floor, yeah. is also, FYI, if you've got a contract with a gym, like a Fitness First or the gym, you know, you're meant to have a smile on your face. You're meant to help people that are just yeah. using the gym as members. Yeah. And so there's nothing wrong in going up or normally they do an intro session some of these things yeah, they'll do like a and uh what we refuse to refer to as fitness mot's or yeah an like induction like or this is how like you that. use this yeah. or this is how you do that and they'll generally stick you on machines which is not necessarily a bad thing as you because machines generally are just easier to use you don't have to focus too much on form because they're fixed range of motion and then you can just really focus on applying intensity and progressive yeah i mean like you don't want to necessarily stick everybody to a machine feeling like you know i, I agree the m most of the time the reason they have fitness mot's is so somebody doesn't kill themselves on a machine yeah. the, the insurance is far too yeah. <laughs> like literally that's the reason why they do it it's because they're like okay if you don't know how to use a gym piece of equipment we need to teach you so then you don't hurt yourself but I do think that maybe if you're going in you're new to a gym environment you've, you're going to a commercial gym as such you there's nothing to say you can't ask a trainer to say how do I put a barbell together or yeah. how do I take a weight off or how do I use these yeah. fucking annoying metal clips on the end of the bars there's nothing more annoying um but that's something I know it takes a little bit more to ask for yeah. but it's nothing to say if you say they're like, okay, we'll take you through the treadmill and this is how you attach yourself on so you don't fall yeah, off. I mean, you could just say, mate, I don't want to walk on the fucking treadmill. I don't really want to use the seated shoulder press machine. Yeah. I'm actually really keen on doing some barbell the work or dumbbells. How do, I, how do I do this? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it should be in their right, you know, they, in their job title, they yeah. should be a willing good, to help. A good, a good PT would, would chomp at that opportunity to help somebody because they're potentially planting a seed in your brain for potential services down the line maybe it might not be a block of sessions could be one sort of uh, yeah. or just word of mouth like and you if you're, help yeah, somebody if... and then that person has a positive experience with you they'll go and tell other people and then that's how somebody in those environments can grow a successful small business so yeah like very successful and your job if you are on gym floors it's very different to when you work in studios as a mm. freelance trainer or you're employed by a studio which yeah. is a very premium one maybe or yeah. very you know specific to the method yeah. it show it does but in general your gym floor job you know you need to be picking up clients you need to be actively and and it is a bit weird so sort of just going yeah. over to somebody whilst they're walking on the treadmill and being like hey mate yeah. you want a pt that's session what they, but that's when you go into those environments that's what they tell you to do so like your fitness manager will say Don't go you and understand? go and t so go and talk to people when they're uh working out and ask them if they want help or give them advice so my going back to my first day at fitness first in green park oh. went down guy was on the treadmill the guy was like go and speak to that dude went to a finance bro the dude had his headphones in and i was like we stood next to him on the treadmill whilst he ran for like two solid minutes just ignoring me took his headphones i was like what the fuck do you want and you're and like this hello like, oh, i'm from zimbabwe <laughs> yeah. like literally like <laughs> i was so disheartened that i just this is the cry. thing like because i think now you know I, I do think that sometimes businesses such as like commercial gyms and oh my god there's a fly in here mark That's get a wasp. it out it's a wasp jesus i'll be running away from the microphone in a minute um i do think that gym owners or people that are corporations that own gyms like probably need to switch on to how you sell or pick up clients mm. in this day and age because normally years and years ago 
people weren't necessarily wearing headphones attached to their phones you yeah. know all of these things you didn't sure. have that you know it wasn't a thing you might have a walkman either wow. you go to the board where they have the you know your your photo and your little bio with the business card and, and like what you do and yeah and and, that and that's how you picked up clients and or like you know and, and now in this day and age if somebody's got their headphones in if i have my airpods in please don't talk to me yeah. like that's the biggest sign is if i have my headphones in i've put them in for a reason yeah. like i don't want people talking to me exactly. um and that's not being rude. It's just getting on with fucking mm. shit. So do I want somebody, like I've had men come in from the gym when I'm training or saying, where I'm just like, just fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. in my, you know, I don't want to fist pump you halfway through a fucking set. Yeah. I don't want you to talk to me. And that's the thing. If you are a trainer picking up clients on a gym floor, then you've got to think like, okay, if somebody's sweating away on like a cardio machine or is like halfway through a set, like maybe that's not necessarily the time. If anything, you should probably be quite observant to your mm. su surroundings, not just block off like around you. Start not in a weird way watching clients, but you know, if members are coming in frequently and they aren't coaches, you can kind of normally tell yeah. the difference between yeah, somebody that is a coach. Yeah. You can just start with that hi do you mm. know what i mean and hope you're well or like you know hi guys do you know what i mean morning hope you you know that kind of thing to then start the conversation potentially yeah. and if you're observant enough you'll see which people in the gym floor are the right people for mm. you to be i guess i have to working admit that's with. A, that one thing that crossfit did really well with their boxes like it's it's such a it, they do have a very uh family oriented yeah like community orientated community oriented and i'd say thing, that's the biggest is, benefit unless you are literally a like you do athlete. get it in the gym like you there are there are some wrong ones but generally <laughs> there are people like i said though on the same journey as you self-improvement wanting they've got a like interest and you can make friends in the gym 100 percent, you can make friends in the gym yeah. just whether or not they're not just yeah that's i don't know sometimes it's questionable yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's of something. Just, just, yeah, it's just very, it can be very awkward. Like I had, I had a guy come up to me whilst I was doing tricep dips and literally oh uh, my... put his dick in my mouth. <laughs> oh my God, no, don't say that, Mark. You, he, <laughs> no. Mark did not have his genitals in this man's life. That sounds like, like what the Mark, I'll put it because I saw yeah, this and I was yeah, like, what was, the Like if I, if I was a woman, I definitely probably would have considered calling the police. Oh, really? Sexual harassment? Because it yeah, was. No, that Mark was, was in the dip machine, that okay? Doing the dips. You know I mean, lads, 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 love the yeah. tricep dips. Yeah. You know what I mean? Chin, whatever. And he'd finished a set and the guy came up behind him, probably squeezed his arms, whatever, and was like, oh, mate, can I use this? And this yeah, is one of Mark's, in. like... He's part of the fist bump He's part crew. of the fist bump crew, but he's... <laughs> Yeah, he was the he's, one, he's yeah. just, yeah, in yeah. my eyes, I don't necessarily, I see red flags, but anyway, <laughs> and he said to Mark, he said, stand there yeah. inside of the dip machine, so imagine you're inside of it like a rat. Like facing each other. Facing each other, and then he got a fucking 20 kilo plate, attached it around his fucking hips, yeah. and started doing dips, But he hasn't got pants on, he's only got like leggings, leggings or what I've referred to as dick pants. Guys, so like, please, just, just understand. Like, you know, you when just you see always, the peanut going up and down. It's not that you shouldn't even be looking. Was so Mark, but it's quite it was so in my face. It was like the arguably Why the weirdest feel and the most need uncomfortable situation to wear leggings. Yeah. I appreciate for women, like once you put on a pair of fucking leggings, good luck getting them off because my no, whole job is literally living in leggings look, though, until I have like a serious me. meeting and I might put a nicer pair of leggings on. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I've got my lines of the best ones. But I think in general, why men wearing leggings is just I guess offensive. it's to kind of show off your leg gains. Yeah, most of the time the ones that are wearing the leggings don't have... Yeah, I don't It's know. just dick Maybe and balls a, and fucking a crusty asshole. Like, i don't know yeah. like it's not something i it's not a good look and if you are no. going to wear leggings which there's no. many put some fucking shorts yeah, over them shorts please over them. because yeah. it's too much just like how i don't know it's just too much for men in the gym like you know it's not very flattering for a man i don't think look 
No, I don't think. And even if you're, and I hate to say this, but if your legs are larger, your dick looks smaller. And if, yeah. so if that's the aim, So you get luck. to the point where your legs are so big, you can't even see your dick anyway. Yeah. All of the bodybuilders, you'll see it like Mr. Olympia. Where yeah. is it? Micro. It's, no, well, it's not like they dick shrink. It's the same size. It's yeah. just incomplete. Obviously no, not. No, because that's a misconception that most people think that steroids make you, it makes your dick smaller, but it doesn't. Okay, Mark, would you know from experience? Yeah, I know from experience because <laughs> I've taken loads of steroids. Mark, you shouldn't be proud of that, but I'm I guess as a profession, it, it, it is what it is anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess going back to like building confidence in the gym and everything that comes with it, you know, there is this thing of going with a structure to yeah. start off with. If and you need an intro to the gym and you actually have no idea how to, you know, sometimes mm. things like cable machines, you look at it and you go, you go into a new gym you're like what the the fuck like where does that go there and And obviously the uh, depending on what types of equipment there are the the brands are slightly different the mechanics are slightly different the setups are slightly different so like don't be like don't be embarrassed when there's been times when i've been like what the actual fuck and i've actually googled it while standing in front of the machine like Okay, well, it's, that it will look... sometimes save you so much hassle just to ask for a little bit of help at the beginning so that you can speed the process up. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying, like, if you can get an intro in, yeah. fine. Don't expect the wonders. If they're a good PT, mm. fucking great. You know, that's yeah. what we all want in this industry for people to actually help yeah. each other. But if not, understand it and don't be afraid to go actually i really want to know how to use that machine not the Mm. one you've just put me on that you put the stereotypical ones i want to know how to use that and i want to know how to set up this and if you can teach me how to set this up you know it's going to give you the confidence to be able to utilize a program and much like anything in life once you start something new you're not going to be amazing at it it requires repetition and practice uh, for you to gain confidence you're not going to walk into the gym and just instantly feel confident after you've gone three times yeah and like, as we said and we've, we, we actually like we said we've been training consistently for over 10 years and it's still daunting and can be a little bit you know yeah but i also think that some people sh- you know we actually sent an email about this i hope you opened it um yeah. <laughs> talking if about just like do you actually now. need to go to the gym yeah. and for some people you don't but you also need to be willing if you are wanting to make huge progress not huge but just progress Mm. you know Mm. then you need to invest in it to make the best you know out of your you know to get the worth you know worthwhile results but i think you know in general the gym is something that it should be a feel-good place and i think a lot of people do see it like that like you know i don't walk into the gym now and think but you know for three years for example um little bit of history if you didn't listen to episode one because we Mm. don't really bring up that often we were in Cape Town, we opened up a gym in Cape Town, but the way we opened up that gym um, was the fact that we purchased a house and we converted the house yeah. into effectively half gym, half home with two different entrances. Yeah. And we created the most beautiful studio and it was amazing, yeah. but we trained in that studio for three yeah, years. We, we didn't did. go to public gyms. No. And I have to say, when I walked back into a commercial gym, I fully understood why so many of my female clients throughout that, those years were yeah. so petrified of going yeah. back you know, into the gym after COVID and all of this mm. shit that's gone on, mm. because it is really intimate. You go in, you're like, oh my God, yeah. like, here we go. It's you know? It's noisy or the music's horrible or it's Yeah, really just people busy. just slamming weights down and you know, sweating and not wiping yeah, the bloody surface. Yeah, sweating and not wiping stuff down and just all sorts of... And you do go, okay, right. Okay, I understand it now. Like, you know, you've been away from it. Yeah. Like when we owned our studio in Cape Town, Honestly, it was the cleanest environment. Mm. And I'm sure everyone that trained in there who listens to this still, or is still a client of ours virtually, will say, like, yeah, it we was sanitized. Yeah. Like, you know, it was literally, please that sanitize your hands, thing, like, wiping, cleaning. We literally had. Gyms can generally be very unhygienic. Having worked in gyms my whole life, yeah, they're foul. Nine out of 10 are foul. And you know what, also, is like sometimes you take yourself into like, if you if you're a consumer in the industry and you're not a coach we're going to give you a bit of information when somebody is a personal trainer and rents space from somewhere which majority of the time they would want to rent because they don't want to have their own space because the financial outlay is just Mm. too much Mm. on a freelance trainer they go and obviously pay to rent space in x studios and like 
it's not cheap. No. It's not cheap. It's not what Your you average think. Average rental in London's what twenty quid an hour? Thirty quid on average. 20 if you're doing a one well, twenty. If you're doing a block, you're paying twenty. 25 an hour our, our rents a month for gym rental in london were thousands like yeah. and that's something as a client i guess they need to understand pricing as well yeah. when you're in like a gym like that because yeah. if for example you've got to think like normally if you're in a very good location a prime part in something like london or any location around mm-hmm. the world that any is a very prime is, city you know yeah, to be in in the town center. They're going to cost a lot. Yeah. You know, they're going to cost a lot. And it's like, that's the reason why trainers, some not, you know, some take full profit and get them, get away and doing absolutely fuck all. But on average, your trainer will be paying like, fuck, a lot of money, mm. 30, 40 quid, you know, 30 quid of your yeah. money that you've paid towards yeah. the gym. How about how, maybe 40% of what you give a personal trainer they'll just spend on on rent on money. renting a gym. so you, that's yeah. why when you go oh god that's quite expensive an hour yeah. you know as i said this is not everybody we know many trainers that wean themselves in and out of gyms without paying for absolutely anything but mm. those are few and far between and they'll be profiting hugely but in average the reason the premium prices are that's because the running costs are insane mm-hmm. like really really expensive um so if you ever think oh why are they charging that much you know it, it, sometimes of course if they're very knowledgeable they should be getting their money's worth but mm-hmm. at the end of the day they also need to be paying for the rents but overall like gyms in general are disgustingly dirty and they, i thought that maybe with covid things have maybe got better but i feel like they did get better and now they're going worse. It's just sa- putting sanitizer and sanitizer and uh, cleaning products readily available for nobody to use them. Like, I took George a photo. George and I are the like, only people to wipe down the equipment. Yeah, I literally see from, like two people. We, we, like, the gym that we do go to, they, the staff are very honored. I, you always see someone cleaning. Yeah, but like that's that. not and to say that I will not highlight the fact there the, is a carpet the thick layer oh, of dust yeah. on the top of the cable machine. And so hair. bad that. He- don't get me started on yeah. her. Um, mm. uh, like literally, I'm like, <laughs> just going to start vomiting in the microphone. Um, and it was, I actually went to go and change the weight on the cable machine and stupidly put my hand like through just to do it and then clocked down at what the fuck was mm. literally my hand was on. And it was literally carpet thick. Like a wig. A wig of like, and you know that skin, that's yeah, pubes. Nobody's that's, cleaned that machine since yeah, it's moved in. It, since it's moved in. And that's things that, like, I guess if you've owned your own gym or you're very heightened to realise these things. It's the same I as mean, studios the, in London we've rented the gym, in. That uh, was our super gym expensive. did accumulate a lot of dust. And, and, you know, to keep on top of it, you're having to... We had to, had full-time cleaners when we were working. Yeah, you're having to, you know, put warm water on the rubber so that you can clean the... Yeah, like clean but it adequately and then use even some of the most high end studios. No, no, fucking mould all over the ceilings. Yeah, Gross. No. Like, that was the one thing that would always drive me. Especially crazy. when you've got clients paying you a lot of money, you yeah, know, and also to want to have a nice deliver environment. Deliver a high end service and and the and the, the facilities don't reflect that. So. Yeah, and so I think that's why I guess you know obviously in hindsight everything's better yeah. when it's yours, but you can't always have that. Um, yeah, but I think you know gaining confidence in those environments it comes down to obviously enjoying it so maybe putting like georgia said putting some headphones on so and finding a good mix of music or you know some cheesy tunes or whatever you really like enjoy if you like techno to. music you can get in contact with us because we've got yeah. some hella good sets you put like. your headphones in like georgia says once you put headphones in people generally tend to not really want to talk to you and like, just... i said to you the other day though didn't i, I said when i took my headphones out i didn't realize how actually fucking noisy the gym yeah, was i was yeah. like why yeah. but then you you know going off of people in the gym people mm. who are surrounding you also need to learn how to respect space yeah you know, and also just understand, just don't behave like a complete weirdo in such a public environment. Yeah, I, I, I guess, will put. I guess I think a lot of people would 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 say that that a lot what, of dropping is, weights, like literally throwing a barber across the mats, just because yeah, you think you've you lifted can't something. you can't stop other people behaving that way, and you're always going to get out. Yeah, but it's really weird. Like for example, there's there's one guy that goes to our gym who I would. I will put a lot of money on saying this. I reckon he's a very successful businessman. Yeah. And I think he's French from what I've gathered. 
and he literally will do set obviously chest set of chest flies and then we'll just go into like high kicks in the middle of the fucking gym start kicking shit start throwing and i'm like bro like what are you doing (laughs) literally and it's very entertaining like you get people dancing around loads of things and doing but you just think like it could put uh, he does it all the time but it's yeah it's but those are the people i hate to say that the ones that walk up and they're like hi can i have this or are you using this or can you get off of it and it's like what are you even doing some high knees you don't even need the machine yeah, <laughs> like, texting texting yeah that's the one thing I crucial saw. thing in a gym is someone came came over was like sorry can i use that i was like obviously you can work in no worries not only did he pick his nose and wipe it on the seat he proceeded to have like Two minutes of texting either side of the that scene. fucks me off so much. So not it's only like, have you come just on. wiped boogers all over the place. Did you say but boogers? Uh, like yeah. that's a really childish thing of saying boogers. Yeah. Did your mum teach you that when you yeah, were a we child? Yeah, we call them boogers or a bogey. Bogies, yeah. Or just like anything. Oh no, people that eat their bogies. No, <laughs> stop it. That's disgusting, Mark. <laughs> That's, That's always, I've never understood that. You know what? This would be a perfect time for what me and Mark thought we'd bring into a couple of our segments yeah. because we've decided that we're both going to think, we're let's going to do, do a little bit of Let's do one a, each. Let's do one each. One each. Okay, go. Ahead. Of what would you rather? I've got a good one. Okay, we'll go first. It's and quite I'll... explicit though. Okay, so, well, I've got one as well. But it would be funny, so I'm just going to say it anyway and I hope that people that listen to this don't judge me. Well, I think everybody's judged you far. <laughs> yeah, so it is what you've it is. You've said some... Re- you've, yeah, anyway, yeah, anyway, go on. But it's going to be humorous. Okay, which would you prefer, to watch a sex tape of my parents or your parents? Jesus Christ, I thought we were talking about the fucking gym. No. Oh, my God, we're going to have a moment of one. silence. Have you have to, to pick, pick one. one. I just know my parents are listening to this. <laughs> like, I literally... <laughs> yeah, I know. Your mother's a very avid listener. Yeah. Um... You have to watch one. Oh, fuck. Carolyn Richards. Don't or... mention their names. <laughs> oh, I guess it's not. <laughs> you know what it is? And then you start just thinking, like, yeah, are they adventurous? Like... You've got to just watch one. And you just got to... I feel like I would need the most, like, non-adventurous tape. I think I would... I would I pick your ch- parents. Yeah, I don't I... know why. That's so weird. I I'd don't also know... pick my parents. Oh, my I God. That's even know. weirder. Just... Why would you? <laughs> I guess it's always that thing when you're like... I don't know, because I think... not a, When you're I a just, child, when you I just got, don't think I could look parents... at your dad in the... In the... Yeah. <laughs> Morning, Chris. How are you? <laughs> fuck. Literally, fuck. I, <laughs> like, couldn't, I, couldn't. I don't know what it is. You just want to blank it out. It's like when you watch a sex scene in a movie yeah. with your parents, even if you're 30 years old yeah. plus, you're still like, oh my God. Yeah, that's so awkward. That's the awkward thing is that we were all produced pretty much yeah. by having sex, but yet we just cannot. Yeah. Some people are very lip, like free willed with sex, and I am not. Yeah. I am like the classic British person where like I just don't, f- I don't feel like I want to talk to people about <laughs> it. Some people like really love just talking about everything. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, masturbation." And you're yeah. like, "What?" Like yeah, literally. We've gone through that. With that what stage. have you been gone through? That? No, that stage where everyone's like. By this vibrator. And, you know. Okay, yeah, and that's actually another thing, like, weird. Which Please is, stop telling I mean, me. I look, I know it's liberating, especially with, like, women. Like, you know, there was this whole thing with sex was only for men and stuff like that. So yeah. maybe women should be empowered with their sexual sure. feelings. And actually, women are very sexual beings. Mm. Mark's looking at me like I, a predator. I don't, like a predator. <laughs> you look like a predator yeah. right now. Um, anyway, you look like Mr. Leggings in the gym. Anyway. <laughs> oh but no, I, I just think, I just, I've always thought this. I, I get the fact some people are into sex. It's very like, I don't know, it gets things going, I guess, in the sense of just like yeah, people talking sells. and it cells, sells. sex fucking yeah, no, cells, no, Jesus. No. But I still think it should be quite private. Like, I don't know. Like we've recently think, watched a program on Channel all, 4. <laughs> we've all got to that stage where there's so many of us that, there's no wrong, right or wrong answer. You know what I mean? Well, no. Like and everybody's got their own vibe. Some people are going to be like, yeah, I want to talk about it all the time and be open about it. And some people are going to be like, it should be, it should stay behind closed doors. I like just this. think when somebody says like, <laughs> I saw a coach do this the other day, actually. And obviously this is like, if, if you know I'm talking about like, well done, but I'm obviously not going to mention. 
And she was listing her daily routine. And in there, she put masturbation. And I was just like, only the like image you, in my head like was just lemonade. somebody masturbating. I was like, get it out. Yeah. It's scarring me. Like, yeah. why do we need to know what that? Schedule it in your day. Sorry, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. I've calls. got to masturbate. No, I pre. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This Sorry. is what I mean. This is like a... This is not appropriate. I can't believe you asked me that. I thought we were talking about gyms. No, I thought I'd just... Well, mine's more um, appropriate then. I thought I'd just catch you off guard. What, with asking if I wanted to watch my parents have sex? Yeah. Okay, well, I wish we had a little comment box, but obviously we're never going to have a comment box because <laughs> yeah. we're not that cool. Just... <laughs> so I was going to say what everyone else would prefer yeah. to watch, their in-laws or their parents? Oh, it's... I don't know. I just don't think I could look at your parents straight in the face. But how could you look at yours is the difference. I just, I don't know. I just, I find my... I just... feel like, you know, when they, as I said, if I was to watch... <laughs> I, <wouldn't laughs> I, don't know, I, just I think thing. your parents would be less adventurous. Not to say, oh my God, my mum will be dying right now. Not to say that my mum will die. Right, let's stop talking this about this. This is the this. reason why I asked the question for this exact... Okay, here's mine. Okay, go. Would you rather mm. train a client mm. fully naked? Yes. No pants, nothing. Yeah. Literally fully naked. Yeah. Or never be able to set foot in a gym again? Def- when you say gym, does that mean a home gym or like, like a commercial every gym? aspect to do with the gym? You can't train at all. I no. can, can I do body weight push ups? <laughs> <laughs> do well, I get to choose which client it is? That's even weirder. Well, I guess I, I can would, you imagine right today? Sorry, I'd rather guys. be fully naked in front of an I know this sounds weird, but in front of another man than a woman. Well, imagine just demonstrating like an RDL fully naked. Yeah, well, if it's... You would see where the sun does not fucking shine. <laughs> yeah, but if it was with one of my homies, then it would be weird. It wouldn't you, be what? as weird. It would be one of... It, it would be weird, right, I but really, it If you're a male client like... of ours, I'm really sorry, because, <laughs> like, Mark suddenly thinks that you're homies, and you can fucking train naked together. Um, I don't know like if I that's... Like I said, only men, men only, which sounds... <laughs> what about in a commercial gym? No, I would definitely just train Never at home. Never go. Yeah, I'd just train at home. Never train again. <laughs> Never train again. Never train again. I don't think I would... Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to get naked in front of a client. That would be... A female client, but... <laughs> Obviously, I've okay just with grown men. up with boys and Okay, you like just that, sound... So... It's all going a bit downhill with this, <laughs> like, literally... <laughs> So there's our segment of you know, what would you prefer? Back you know the to... stereotype when you go into the men's, well, for the men listening, if you don't know, when you go into the men's changing room, there's always a naked two person. or three men and the older they get, the more naked they become. <laughs> yes. And they're always just slapping, leaving it hanging out. So slapping like, it against some soap and Yeah, shop. you know, I went to an all boys school, so I'm like, like nudity in front of other men is not like an issue for me yeah i mean some some girls i know are not like yeah, conservative about they'll just like fucking walk around girls, you know what i mean it's like there's no well, yeah if you've got like housemates you're like friends or whatever yeah. like that's like fine i think with like like that would scar them i don't think any client would stay with us after that yeah, that would be you horrific you wouldn't be able to look at each other in the face no, no, not even even your homies, Mark. I don't think you'd be able to look them in the face when you fucking demonstrated a squat press with a dick out. Um, yeah, hilarious. Anyway, um, back to the gym and the confidence. I think overall what we want to talk about today is like, you know, just making sure that, you know, gyms shouldn't be areas in which you are intimidated mm. by. We can understand mm. why people are intimidated by them. If you're listening to this and you're one of those individuals where you think you could be quite intimidating to be mm. around, you know, in a gym, change it up, realise yeah, that be you're... Considerate be considerate of other people. Yeah. Because and, everybody's on their own personal journey. Everybody's running their own race. And sometimes you being a little bit more accommodating can, can help another person fall in love with something yeah. that you, if you are a regular something that you can find easy and simple like t- going to the gym all the time and turning up it's very difficult for, for some people to do that yeah and smiling at people and being no okay right now let's stop you there you don't need to smile at everybody not in a, a weird, weird way but like, just be happy and just like, not happy okay not everybody's just, happy either just, all the time you know be Civil. Just if you're seeing people on a regular basis, or no, you see somebody large. that looks a bit uncertain, you know, 
Okay, Mark. Mark, well, Mark if you could see on video wink. right now. <laughs> Okay, and no, do you know what? You just need to take no, yourself no. away from yourself right now. <laughs> I always wink at George. No, you? yeah, and I always ignore him so he yeah. looks even weirder. <laughs> like, literally. Mark does weird faces at me in the gym. Yeah. Anyway, um, I think just have a friendlier approach. And if you see somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing, they're struggling, whatever, don't feel the need you need to go over there mm. because they might actually be perfectly fine. They might just be just yeah. in their own little world. Mm. But if you consistently see somebody, which as we said, there are people that really actively try and go regularly. Yeah. And we definitely have like a regular base in our gym, which we always no, say hi to and stuff. The thing is stuff. like you, you're you going to end up going roughly at the same time on the same day. So you're generally going to see pretty much the same people over yeah. and over again. So if you are seeing people, you know, have, have a smile on your face. If you are a trainer and you're listening to this, not that you're not already, just have some enthusiasm of not looking like you just know better yeah, the whole certain time. things that don't cost anything. Like it's being just polite, manners. Yeah. You know, smiling. Like we see it with trainers with us. They still yeah. won't smile. They still won't even say hi. It's like this yeah. fucking face like a slapped ass. Yeah. And it's, it's weird. Weird non-invasive in that gym as yeah, well. There's, it's off-putting and it makes you feel... Like, yeah, I just think you like you're welcome. Just acknowledge the person. The person walks past and stares in the other Especially direction. Especially if you're wearing a t-shirt with the gym brand on it, like at least represent yeah, what it should be. Your... Um, also, just understand, you know, gyms aren't necessarily going to be the cleanest of places. No. Please wipe down your equipment after you've used it. Yeah, and like Georgia said, structure. Um, if yeah, you don't, key. if you're not a hundred percent certain on on what you're doing, then invest a little bit of time and money into it whether it's getting a, an introduction or an induction or paying for a one-off PT session or something where somebody can write you a program, it's going to save you so much time, effort and hassle. Yeah, uh, and like we always say then. this as well. We have loads of people that direct message us on like Instagram and stuff that want us to look over their training programs they put together and all of this. And like we're super happy to do that because yeah. we're not... As we've said in so many podcasts, we're not you sucking salesy type, like, please buy, otherwise we're not going to help you. Yeah. We very much want to point you in the right direction so you feel good about yourself and what you're doing. So if you do have a workout program, you're, not un you're unsure of maybe how, how it's been built or whether yeah. you're covering the right patterns or, you know, then drop us a message and we can always help with um, all of that stuff. Um, but again, you know, structure is key. If you're going in, you have no idea what you're doing and why you're there. You're going to end up yeah. on the fucking shoulder yeah, press machine. You can, if, you, if you are feeling a bit intimidated, then you can, like Georgia said, put your headphones in, find yourself some music that you can relate to and that you enjoy listening to. You got your little plan. You can create a little environment. Yeah, in and the don't feel like you need gym. to sit on the cardio machines just no. to hide away. Because I do no. see that, like a lot of women that go in, you know, and will go and it's quite obvious that they don't have that confidence yeah. to be able to step out. And I understand, as I said, a time and time again, why, but you know, you don't need to sit on a cardio machine. If anything, for so many people, like going and doing mm. sets and reps and stuff is really motivational in the yeah. sense of keeping them progressing. So, you know, don't feel you need to sit on a cardio machine. And also when you put your bloody headphones in, you can't hear anyone around you. They can't hear you. Just Get on yeah. with it. You know, at the end of the day, you might, as we say, oh dear, the wasp is back. Fuck. We might have to end this now, otherwise. Mark's, oh dear, here we go. We're actually killing a wasp live on the podcast. It's dead. Uh, it's it's dead. dead. Okay, that's quite morbid. Missing with the wrong African. No, okay. I don't, okay. Mark is actually hitting it on the floor right, right now. Oh, it's alive. And now it's angry. Like, okay, oh should. dear, I think we should end this now. Yeah, it's going um, to sting no, us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so just think of a plan you know if you it doesn't always have to be super complex give yourself the availability once your headphones are in do as you fucking please waltz in there finish your session yeah. feel good about yourself you're there to progress yourself you're there to make yourself feel better not yeah. anybody else people will get over it might look at you the first time you come in potentially because mm. you're new like anything it's yeah. changed you will get you will get through that, and once you build that confidence with practice and time and time building yeah. those Repetition. habits, repetition, like you, will you be... like take it like how you would you with your job when you first started. It was a little bit awkward. The yeah, environment get to know the team. felt yeah. a bit weird. No, but everybody feels awkward when they start a new job, and the only way that you get super confident is by learning to adapt to the environment that you're in and constantly showing up and practicing. Yeah. Like you'll remove, tasks. we always say this, you will remove every doubt with just action. Yeah. And 
not every doubt but you know in general like you will remove doubt with actioning something so if you if you're sitting on the edge of going into the gym maybe you've had like a few years of covid at home yeah. you're a bit scared of being going in mm. you know we're dealing with a lot of people that are contacting us off of this yeah. just take that first step to bettering yourself yeah. overall action. and take and some action take some action anyway that is all from us today for episode seven we will be back with episode eight we're going to surprise you with what it is but in the meantime if you've got questions yeah, queries us, uh, thanks for all your support we will speak to you guys if you're listening soon. on spotify guys give us a, a rating no, five, star five, five stars star. only please don't do anything less <laughs> <laughs> five stars only otherwise we'll block you <laughs> okay guys we, we will be up on apple soon just taking yeah. a bit of time okay. speak to you soon guys bye, bye.